As Vice President Harris is looking for that running mate, one consideration is how that pick might affect the presidential map. And Finn Gomez was just talking about that. We know after J.D. Vance was picked, there was speculation whether he might appeal to people in the industrial Midwest for Vice President Harris. What would her map look like? CBS News Executive Director of Election and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, joins us now. So, Anthony, tell, take us inside the map here. Let's say Senator Mark Kelly's pick. That, does that actually bring in the Sun Belt? If Gretchen Whitmer's pick, the governor of Michigan, does it actually bring in the industrial Midwest? Does she need to pick Josh Shapiro to win Pennsylvania? How do you see it based on our data? Well, it's never too early, even though it's July, to break out that map, Bob. So this is a good reason to do that. Look, for context for everybody, these states in white are the seven battleground states most likely to be the closest one, right? So anything maybe could tip the balance. And to understand the context on the math here, you mentioned, okay, Josh Shapiro, Pennsylvania. If a Democrat of Kamala Harris wins that, you mentioned Gretchen Whitmer, Michigan, okay? They win that and they win Wisconsin. These states all have a few things in common. One is a place where Democrats tend to do a little bit better with white non-college voters. Well, that gets you to 270. But in the same vein, like you mentioned, Donald Trump winning those, well, that, if J.D. Vance helps him do that, would mean that he would merely have to hold North Carolina to get over 279 there. So that's just one of many scenarios, Bob. But I will add this. You know, by the way, I'll add this, too. You mentioned Mark Kelly in Arizona. I think that might speak to if Harris could take maybe a more southern route, different kind of coalition, more support from, say, minority voters, that part. Well, that would get her over 270 as well, including Arizona. But I'm going to kick it back to you with this, Bob, talking about history. Arguably, do you have to go back to 1960 to LBJ, like you were mentioning, to think of a Democratic vice presidential pick that helped a presidential candidate, in that case Kennedy, deliver a state they might not otherwise have won? I don't know. Maybe historians will argue with me there. But that, that feels like it might be it, doesn't it? It's an interesting point. I know JFK and RFK had some tense discussions about bringing LBJ in back in 60, and it was JFK's decision ultimately to do that. What about Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania? I mean, this is a state everybody's focused on. The vice president's there today. If Shapiro's picked, you, you've studied his coalition. What does he actually bring? He's from Montgomery County outside of Philadelphia. Does he actually put her over the top in Pennsylvania or a, uh, a toss-up? I think we go back and we speak to two things. One is that coalition. Josh Shapiro, in winning in Pennsylvania, did outperform Joe Biden, did very well, again, especially with relative performance, white non-college voters. Democrats aren't likely to win that group. The question is whether they can keep their margins at or around the high 30s, 40-odd percent. question is whether that is a factor with Shapiro. And the other part of this is, for any presidential candidate, picking the vice president is often seen as the first big presidential decision that they make. So it's not just about states and geography having been through all that, but it's also about how the wider electorate sees their decision-making process. Bob. Anthony Salvanto at the map. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it.